everybody! I hope you're having a nice day. Poppy's here. Hey pups, you gonna get up? Up she gets onto the table, the well-behaved Poppy. Um, so I'm here to review this, which is my vintage uh, make for the month and my pattern review. Here is the pattern. Um, so it's from the 1970s, I believe. I can tell basically from the style of it. Um, so let me show you it. Here we go. So we've got um, a little collar here, a belt here, and um, there are some little tucks here. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but there's little tucks here. Poppy, no. I've got my lipsticks on the table ready to show you at the end as well, and Poppy's trying to eat them. Um, and if I stand back, you can see. Um, so it's kind of A-lined, and it's really pretty detail at the back. It's got a yoke at the back, which is really nice. So, um, and then I put cuffs on it. So I did change the pattern quite a lot. Um, so I have to show you these pattern pieces. So the worst pattern piece that I just literally took out of the pattern, um, looked at it and decided, no, Poppy, straight away that I was not gonna do, use it, was the sleeve pattern. And I will show you why. Um, it was the biggest costume sleeve that I've ever seen. Um, very, very 70s. Here it is. This was the sleeve. It's enormous, okay? Massive sleeve head, massive cuff. So it would have been uber billowy and really puffed up here. So I took one look at it and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna use that. I'm, I really don't want to have really puffy, puffy sleeves. It's not really my thing. Um, and I also changed the collar. The collar was super pointy and really big. So I had a really deep, bit of a deeper collar stand um, was really, really long. Um, um, what else did I change? I changed the cuff as well on the sleeve. So um, I basically put, um, I put the cuff on, but I didn't do a buttonhole. I just made it a loose cuff so I could slip it on and off. Um, Poppy, can you go down there? Thank you. So the sleeve, what I did is I took the pussy bow blouse, pussy bow blouse sleeve and put that in because I knew that was a relatively, I compared the sleeve, the head of the sleeve with things that I had and the width and I figured that that was the closest that I had. It was quite a loose sleeve um, and it fitted perfectly. I didn't need to make any alterations to that. Um, the collar, I just basically could see, you could see on the pattern piece, I've cut it up now so you can't tell, but I just could see it was this really elongated pointy parts to the collar and I just knew that that was just going to be like super pointy and you can see it on the illustration as well um, it's really really pointy so I knew that I'd need to do that from the outset um, and then the cuffs I just thought I'd want to make my life easy I don't need to do a button cuff so I just made sure I could put my hand in and out of it and I just gathered the pussy bow blouse into a um, sort of gathered it all the way around and then popped it in so that was quite easy the other thing that I did, which is quite different from what they wanted me to do, was the tucks. So basically it had pin tucks at the front, but I decided that um, pin tucks in this print would not be great. Um, so what I did is I did them inverted. So they're sitting on the inside of the garment. I have pin tucks. Um, and on the outside it just looks like sort of flat darts and I felt like that was better. Also I did a little pr pressing check and this fabric is nice to work with but it doesn't iron brilliantly so it it doesn't sort of, it kept bouncing up and it just didn't sit flat and, and they're quite fine pin tucks so they would have just been like ridges which I didn't really want that look. And I do think with pin tucks that they look brilliant with small prints or plain cloth. But like this has quite a large print, so um, I didn't think it would work that well. I didn't do anything to the hem. I kept the hem as is because I quite like long over just over the knee um, uh, skirts. And I also, um, the belt came with a belt pattern and I basically just didn't put a, a buckle on it. But it's just left, I've just left it as a tie belt. I'm just going to show you the yoke at the back. You can't see that. It's really pretty and it's also got little tucks here as well. Um, so really nice detail. So the instructions, um, <laughs> yep, they definitely um, left some to the imagination. Um, classic vintage instructions where you pretty much need to work it out for yourself. There were some nice illustrations, but 
yeah, it's a lot of assumption that you know what you're doing. Um, so I did struggle with a couple of things, but it wasn't clear, especially attaching the yoke at the back. It didn't seem to be particularly clear where that joined the bottom of the dress, but um, apart from that, I managed to follow most things. This was also quite fiddly, finishing the kind of band that sits on the inside of this V. Um, and in the end, I sort of scrapped their idea and did my own little thing. I sort of had to tuck it in from the front and tucked it in from the back and did a bit of slip stitching. But that, um, it's sitting nicely now. So sometimes I do that and I guess it's not very useful when I'm telling you guys because I can't exactly explain what I did. But sometimes it doesn't seem to work. The instructions that you're using just feel like they're more tricky than you, they need to be and working out a way of doing it with the same effect and the same finish is absolutely fine and you know who's going to be like uh, I don't think you put that together in the way that they wanted you to. Um, they aren't here to check and as long as it looks good that's all that matters. So um, the will I make this again? I do not know. Um, this isn't normally the sort of dress that I wear because often I wear quite fitted things um, but I do actually really like it but I think what I particularly like about it is the fabric and I think this is quite a 70s print um, this is a new crepe that we've just got in stock and we will be putting a link to it in the comments um, but um, yeah I, I think that the fabric I'm more excited about than the actual pattern um, I just think that I don't know maybe if I found another fabric that I really really like then I might use it it's a perfect uh, pattern actually for fabric that you really like because there's not a lot of going going on it's quite a simple shape so apart from the tucks here you can kind of really shout about the fabric so I often find that really complicated panel dresses with lots of darts and details and things like that they tend not to show off a fabric so well and they're better with a simpler fabric but something with quite a strong fabric like this the simpler the shapes so if you're working with big panels and big pieces they tend to work better which is the same reason why I love the shift dress so much because often um, I choose a fabric that I'm absolutely in love with and the fabric shouts more than the pattern so the shift dress is really simple there isn't much to it but it shows off amazing fabrics so this is a bit like that um, and it's definitely a great dress for winter because it's going to keep me warm. I can get my thermal vest under here. I can have it tucked into my tights and I can have a slip on. Yeah, it's a very sexy going on underneath here. It's keeping me warm. Um, so yeah, it was good to do a vintage pattern though because I haven't done one for a while and it's always good to um, see what they're like. And you do sometimes pick up things that you think are random but interesting approaches. And I didn't particularly feel like I had an amazing gem from this pattern but um, yeah it was good to challenge myself I think that's also really good it's good to test yourself and you know there was a few swear bits a few swear words that came out of my mouth whilst I was doing this pattern um, but anyway so there we go another dress into the wardrobe um, and another dress that I can wear right now which is really good so the other half of what I said I was going to do today was to show you my favorite lips Lipsticks. Oh, my voice went high there. Lipsticks. So, um, I, if you don't know this about me, I absolutely love makeup um, and I'm a big fan of lots of other beauty, other, I'm not a beauty vlogger, other vloggers who vlog on beauty. So I, I watch quite a lot of vlogs on that. Um, and I am a sucker for beautiful be packaging of lipsticks and makeup and all things like that. Um, but I digress. Today what I'm going to do is share my most favourite uh, type of makeup, which is lipstick. So I generally, you see me with quite bright lipstick, um, um, that is my favourite colour, so a bright red or a, a bright pink. Uh, I feel that it lifts my skin, it just, um, yeah, it brightens my face and often goes with the colours that I'm wearing. And it's also got a vintagey look that kind of goes with my makeup look that I often do. So, um, but wearing strong lipstick's quite hard because it can bleed and it can get messy and it rubs off on everything. And if it, you know, when I give Matt a morning kiss, goodbye. If I don't have a special type of lipstick on, he wears that lipstick for the rest of the day. So, this, I think it's important, the right type of lipstick, anyway, that you use for, for reds and, and bright pinks. So I have got four of my favourite strong lipsticks and I've also got one that's nude which I'm starting to wear quite a lot. 
So I, when I wear my red lipstick, I've, I've got a million shades of red lipstick and these are just my favourite ones, but I do tend to like look at what I'm wearing and if I think that it's those orangey tones in what I'm wearing, then I might wear an orangey red. If there's pinky tones, then I'll wear a pinky red, etc, etc. So I do think about my lipstick um, as with my outfit as well, all in all. Um, so the one that I'm wearing now, um, this is actually a Max Factor lipstick. Um, it's called Lipfinity. So this comes part of two, so it's basically, this is like a lip stain and then it comes with a balm that you put on afterwards. So this has like a little applicator, a um, bit like a lip gloss, and you pop that onto your lips and then you leave it to dry, so I sort of stand there going <laughs> blowing my lips. If you ever come and see me at one of the shows and I'm topping up my lipstick and blowing my lips, that's why. Um, and then once it's set, you then put on the balm, which is like a lip gloss. So, I don't know if you can see if the light's good enough, it's the end of the day, but this is brilliant because you basically can just keep topping up the gloss and it looks like a, just a regular, um, a sort of a lip balm, um, but it's really high glossy, so, um, and it's also moisturising because what you find with these stains is they can really dry your lips out. But the best thing about these stains is they do not bleed, and I absolutely love that. So when you put your lip up, lipstick on, it will not bleed beyond your lips or beyond where you put it. It just stays put. Well, the worst thing about them is they wear out inside, so you do find that you have to top it up. And if you were, go, were to go the whole day without topping it up, you'd end up with a sort of a lip line all the way around. So they do need topping up. But this one, I think, is the best one for that because it probably only needs topping up twice. So just before I filmed this, and it's about five o'clock right now, I put a bit more on. Um, but before then, it was absolutely... Um, it, you know, but up until then I've had my lunch, I've had my breakfast, I've had lots of cups of tea and it's lasted fine. So this is a good one and the colour is 338 Max Factor Lipfinity. I shall put a link to it if I can find one in the comments. The next lip stain, this was the first um, lip stain that I found and this is what you guys see me in a lot. This is Superstay 24 Colour by Maybelline. And this is like my favourite, favourite, favourite red lipstick. It does come in a couple of shades. This one is 510 and it's like a proper vintage red. It's just like a really good red red. And it works in exactly the same as the Lipfinity. Um, it comes with a little kind of lip gloss um, applicator. And at the other end it is got a balm and it's amazing. So I wear this, yeah, loads. and. Um, I, there's two different reds that I do, they do, I've got both of them, but this is my favourite. But they also have loads of colours, so even if you prefer like a nudie lipstick and you, you're sick of that coming off, you can, you can get that, it's brilliant. This isn't as good for coming away in the middle, and it does come away in the middle, and you do have to top it up a, a few times in the day, but it doesn't bleed, and it still lasts a lot longer than normal lipstick. Okay, my next one is one of my new favourite ones. This is a Yves Saint Laurent. Um, and this is much more of an orangey red. Um, and when I did the video where I showed you guys the new cocoa that I made with um, the Indian fabric, I was wearing this lipstick and I did get quite a few comments about that. Um, I haven't got the number on here, but I'm gonna try and find, it's worn away, that's really useful. I'm gonna try and look at it later in better light and I will put a link to what number it is. But it's a really good, um, quality lipstick in that it's really moisturising and doesn't bleed too much. I tend not to wear these types of lipsticks that often because they bleed, so like a traditional lipstick, but this is great and it's really moisturising um, and it is a bit more expensive, I think it was about 20, between 20 to 25 pounds, but it's worth it, it's, it's really good. And I do think that the, the kind of um, cheaper alternatives, your Maybellines, your Max Factors, they're great for lip stains, but not so good for actual traditional lipsticks. So I tend to buy high end for a proper lipstick. Um, yeah, so that's my next favorite. My last big red one, you won't be able to see this, but Poppy has had this one um, and she's got it's got bite marks all over it. So this is MAC and it is Ruby Woo and there's hardly any of it left. Um, this is, yeah, it's called Ruby Woo. Ruby Woo. It's really hard to say that. I sound like Jonathan Ross. Um, 
And this is a really good um, lipstick because it's very chalky. And because it's chalky, it doesn't bleed. Another reason um, to get this, this is, seems to be the main reason why I buy lipsticks um, that are red and don't bleed, when they don't bleed. But also, they're really high pigmented. So both, all of these lipsticks that I've shown you, that you get a really strong colour, and this is um, no exception. So when I put this on though, if you were to put it straight onto dry lips, it just kind of like gets stuck because it's so chalky. So you need to put a little bit, just a little, little bit of um, lip balm or something on, but not too much. Um, and then it slides on better. If you put too much lip balm on, then it does bleed because the lip balm will bleed. So it's important that you don't put too much on with that. But yeah, this is a really good lipstick. Um, good old MAC. So Ruby Woo. And it's funny, I can spot Ruby Woo on people's lips. I've been in bars and in restaurants where with friends or people that aren't my friends. And I've gone, sorry, excuse Matt, behind. And I've gone, um, are you wearing Ruby Woo? And <laughs> um, they're like, oh my God, what are you, a lipstick freak? Anyway. The final one that I'm going to share with you is something very unusual that I've started to wear because I don't normally wear a nude lipstick, but I have started to wear this one. So um, I'll wear a nude lipstick if I'm going with a bit more of a natural look or a little bit, um, yeah, I don't want, I, basically I don't want to have such a strong lip. Perhaps I've done a bit more eyeshadow than I normally do, or it's just I'm wearing something really pastel-y. Um, then I think that a nude goes well. And nudes are quite hard to wear because you can get them and they're far too orange or they're far too brown or they're far too pink. So finding the right nude is quite um, tricky. But this one is brilliant and it's by Clinique and it's called Nude Pop. And it's really moisturizing and it's really, um, it's got a slightly pinky tone to it, which for my skin tone is, is nice, it lifts my skin. But yeah, it's just a really lovely colour um, and really subtle um, and you don't need to wear liner or anything with it, you can just whack it on. And if you're not very confident about being very precise with your lips, this is really good because it doesn't matter, you can't really see it, it's really soft and gentle and moisturising. So yeah, those are my favourite lipsticks. Um, I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, if you want to know more about my makeup, let me know, I can always tag on more videos on that. Um, but for now, that is it. Um, I um, will be seeing you next week to show you my fabric haul for March and just about fitting into March. I'm a little bit behind at the moment um, with my vlogs, but I'm, I'm planning on filming my um, video for March um, fabrics in the next couple of days and then I'm going to get straight on making so that I can show you guys my makes really quickly afterwards. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!